today and that we have the opportunity to talk to you once again or maybe you're joining us for the first time in these strange apocalyptic times apocalyptic simply meaning unveiling every day now people have revelations about themselves about other people their surrounding and the world that we are experiencing my name is Henrik and RedEyesCreations.com is our website agree or disagree at the end of the day that doesn't really matter we're not here to convince you of anything what we hope to achieve in the process of self-discovery is that we can give you something that will expand your worldview, make you see things in a new light as we highlight research and material from all kinds of different perspectives. And today we are continuing with that tradition together with Anthony Peake. He studied sociology and history at the University of Warwick and at postgraduate level at the London School of Economics. He is a professional member of the Scientific and Medical Network, the International Association of Near-Death Studies, the Society for Physical Research, and the Institute of Noetic Sciences. He is the author of several books and probably best known for his fascinating theory, which he terms Sheeting the Ferryman. It suggests a totally new approach to the nature of consciousness and its relationship with the external world. Anthony has been with us before, as you regular listeners know, and today he returns to Red Eyes Radio to discuss the nature of reality and the twilight zones of consciousness. Well, Anthony, welcome back to Red Eyes Radio. It's great to uh, talk with you once uh, again. How have you been and, and what's uh, new, Anthony? I'm looking forward to talking about all the, all the latest stuff, of course. There is. It has been absolutely an incredible period of time since we last spoke in that interest in my work is now really taking off worldwide. Um, um, about six months ago, I did a talk at the Weird Festival in Swindon in the UK, and I shared a platform with uh, Graham Hancock. Um, and since then, we have had the Lucid Light device, which we talked about last time. We brought that over to the UK, and the amount of interest in it was was just breathtaking. Since then as well, I've now, since we last spoke, I've now written uh, three more books. There are two more books that came out in November, uh, and I have another book coming out in um, in two months' time as well. I'm also now the major speaker at uh, this year's uh, Mind, Body and Spirit Festival in London. And what is exciting about this is we're bringing over a lucid light device, which will be at the festival for four or five days. And we're also hoping that a gentleman by the name of Mitch Schultz, who I think you've interviewed in the past, That's is uh, an associate of, of um, uh, Rick Strassman. Mitch is going to be coming over as well, and we're going to be doing a special showing of the, the movie The Spirit Molecule. So, and I will then be doing a, a two-hour workshop um, on the Sunday afternoon, um, I think it's the 2nd of um, June, 2nd or 3rd of June. So it's amazing. And on top of that, literally today, being Groundhog Day of all days as well, is that um, somebody I've been in contact intermittently over the last few years is the American scriptwriter Danny Rubin. And Danny was the guy that wrote um, the screenplay for the movie Groundhog Day. Uh, and Danny and I now are in regular and direct contact. Uh, and Danny, in fact, has just brought out a book on the writing of Groundhog Day. Mm. But on top of that, today as well, 14 times reviewed um, my out-of-the-body experience book and gave it a 9 out of 10 and gave it an absolute rave review. And I'd like to thank Bob Rickard for an actually incredible review on it. So things are just kicking off over and just across the world. It's absolutely incredible. And we think we are now about to move from being sort of a minority interest in terms of um, myself and my group to being something quite phenomenal worldwide. And I have to say that Red Ice have been absolutely instrumental in this um, because the amount of people who have approached me after um, listening to the, the recordings that we've done in these shows has been marvellous, you know, and all Fantastic. over the place. Thank you so much for for your continued interest in my work. Oh, you bet. I mean, it's that's excellent to hear. Really good, and I'm glad to hear that people out there are listening, of course, and taking an interest. And to me, it's really exciting that all these, uh, you know, seemingly disconnected subject fields are 
beginning, if you will, to communicate with each other or the researchers are doing it. Uh, everything from life after death to nature of reality to the uh, the physics, if you will, of, of, of the soul and also now stretching into the uh, the DMT, the hallucinogenic kind of subject matter as well with some of Strassman's work. So that must, must be really exciting for you as well to be kind of in the middle of all that, if you know. It is. And I very much do feel I'm in the middle of it. I mean, interestingly enough, um, um, two weeks time um, in the afternoon, two weeks time, I'm being interviewed by a lady called um, Dr. Mangia Samantha Lawton, who's written a book called Punk Science Inside the Mind of God which is proving very, very popular in the UK and America. And she is do, uh, putting together um, a, a movie uh, come documentary about her work in terms of quantum physics and consciousness. And I'm going to be interviewed at the Institute of Physics in London by Mangia to discuss my particular angle on all this. But after that, I'm then go going into central London. I'm meeting up with uh, a guy called Gary Lackman, who, again, I think you've possibly interviewed in the past. No, I, unfamiliar name to me. Tell us, tell oh, us a little right. bit about yeah. him. Gary, yeah. I, I can facilitate something on this for you. Gary Lackman is a fascinating guy. Um, he, as Gary Valentine, he was the, um, I think he was the bass guitarist of the rock band Blondie. Mm-hmm. Um, and after moving on for Blondie, he then um, performed with Iggy Pop and various other new wave New York bands. But his interest has always been the esoteric. And he is an absolute expert on Peter Ospensky and has written probably the definitive book on Ospensky. But on top of that, he's written various other books on on just the, the Western esoteric traditions. Um, and he and I spent a fascinating few hours around about three or four months ago discussing our respective points of view in terms of this. But ironically enough, he he wrote an article in 14 Times um, on the phenomenon known as hypnagogia, which is that liminal state between sleeping and waking. In fact, just before you go to sleep in the evening, it's called hypnagogia. And when just as you wake up, it's called hypnopompia. And both of these are kind of states whereby human consciousness seems to open up the doors of perception, as William Blake called them, and, and latterly Aldous Huxley, to be in a position whereby you start to to perceive the reality behind the reality, as the Gnostics would say. Now, Gary, uh, Barry, uh, Gary wrote an article about this, and in the article he cited a phenomenal book called Hypnagogia, written by a, a Greek academic called Dr. Andreas Mavromatis. Now, I did um, the launch for my new book at Watkins Bookshop in November, and Andreas turned up at the, the lecture, and I was absolutely delighted that somebody that's been one of my intellectual heroes for many years turned up. But what is amazing is that Gary has cited um, uh, Dr. Mavromatis's work many, many times, but the two of them have never met up. So I'm in the facilitating the meeting between Gary Lackman and Dr. Andreas Mavromatis, and we're also hoping that uh, Dr. Mangia Samantha Lawton will also join us. So we're having this amazing meetings of minds that it seems as if fate is conspiring to draw us all together. Now, on top of this, there's also, I don't know if you've read the work of a guy called Jeff Warren. No, also I'm familiar, actually, yeah. Okay, Jeff Warren is, I think he may be Canadian or American. I'm not quite sure exactly his, his background nationality. But Jeff wrote an amazing book called Head Trip. And Head Trip is like a travel book where he travels the world talking to people who deal with the, the further reaches of consciousness and how consciousness interfaces with other realities. And he has in his book a large section again on Dr. Andreas Mavromatis and his book on hypnagogia. And again, I'm facilitating contact between these two guys. And it seems to me it's like a huge Venn diagram where it's like the spokes of a wheel. And I seem to be in the center of this wheel, facilitating contact between people who ordinarily wouldn't be in contact with each other. Hmm. And it's an incredibly humbling experience because I'm also keen to get Tom Campbell involved in this. Um, there are various other individuals that uh, Dr. Irvin, uh, Professor Irvin Laszlo, right. quite keen to get Irvin Laszlo involved in it all as well, because we are really genuinely building up a new paradigm here, you know, and it's a new paradigm that is divorced from what I would consider the, the wackier elements of New Ageism. 
in the sense what we're doing is we're doing the hard science. We're not just sitting back and talking about experiences. We're trying to understand why it is that the brain functions in the way it does. How does it open these channels of communication with alternate realities? Are these alternate realities genuine realities or are they something more? Now, again, interestingly enough, um, I was talking to um, uh, Graham Hancock about this before uh, um, a talk we both did that we shared a platform mm. again in September of last year. And of course, as you know, Graham is also working on the, the implications of ayahuasca and dimethyltryptamine as well. That's right. So we're all all going in the same journey we're all going on the same direction but we're all approaching it from subtly different areas and i am surprised to to discover that i seem to be the the eye of the hurricane at the moment in terms of a lot of things <laughs> well, that's, ex that's exciting uh, how how is it progressing overall do you, do you feel from your perspective then what is being uh, learned i guess is the, is the bigger question oh it 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 is, it is like an amazing toboggan ride at the moment in that everything I seem to touch seems to, 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 to grow. You know, and every time I contact somebody, there is information that can be gleaned that can, I, I can bring together for my overall wider hypothesis about the nature of consciousness and reality. Um, and really, sometimes I cannot even believe how, how, fast, how fast this is growing and developing. Because people are just getting involved from around the world. I'm getting contacts now from people from China, people from Australia, people from Canada. All the time people are contacting me. And for instance, um, Danny Rubin informs me that he has given copies of my first book, Is There Life After Death, to, to all of his close friends because he says this guy's done the science of Groundhog Day, even though at the time Danny had not realized exactly the, the level of esoteric thought that, that people would place on his overall plot. Hmm. Because, you know, people have turned around and said, um, was Danny writing Buddhism? Was he writing Nietzsche? Was he writing various other ways of the, the eternal recurrence, the eternal return? Or was, he, or was he writing something of profound significance for the future of humanity? Well, of course, all Danny was doing was he was writing a screenplay. Hmm. Um, and that's all his intention was. And his new book that has recently come out, it was launched, I think, last week, um, which, is, which is called Groundhog Day, writing the screenplay, I think, of something of like that. He tells you exactly how he wrote the book and where the ideas came from. And I believe what's happening is that worldwide there is some kind of an awakening going on. People are becoming – I'm not a great believer in the whole 2012 thing. But what I do believe in is that people certainly are waking up to a much wider understanding of the nature of reality and a much more open worldview. You know, the idea of that, that we're stuck in the science of 110 years ago mm. is passe now. Mm. You know, if you read some of the latest research and some of the work being done even by people like Stephen Hawking, for example, Stephen Hawking is working with a guy called um, Thomas Hertog at CERN. And Hawking and Hertog have written a series of papers suggesting that the many worlds interpretation of particle physics as put forward by um, Hugh Everett III can actually be proven now in terms of the observed behavior of subatomic particles to the extent that Hawking, and remember this is Stephen Hawking, this isn't some guy down coming up with his ideas by um, just reading things. Hawking is considered to be probably the most famous intellectual particle physicist the world has ever seen. And Hawking is suggesting, and get this, Hawking and Hartle are suggest, uh, and Hertog are suggesting that every potential reality and every outcome of every event and every outcome of every particle event actually exists out there as a potentiality. It exists as a potentiality. It is not that it will come to being as you take decisions, hmm. but it's out there. And all we do is we collapse the, the wave function of that particular outcome by our actions, which effectively means that other variations of us who follow other different actions collapse different wave functions, and in which case bring about different universes. Now, this is Stephen Hawking. You know, this is, this is, this is incredibly exciting. Hmm. You know, and, and his associate, you know, is one of the top research scientists at CERN. 
Now, of course, we also have the the phenomenon of the Higgs boson right. and the discovery of the Higgs boson as well, which in itself has massive implications for the nature of reality. 